you want to engage your students and keep their attention, there probably isn't a better way of doing it than using a pen. Not only can you draw out equations, but you can literally draw the attention of the students where you want them to be. They will know exactly what you're talking about, and they will be never left to ask, wait, what, what bullet point was she talking about? Where was he when he said that? They'll know it, they'll learn better, they'll engage more, and the quality of your videos is just going to go up and up and up. I'm going to show Windows users a handful of ways in which you can draw on the screen or on an iPad or even on pen and paper to be able to draw out things for your students. Feel free to jump around in this video. In the end, I'm going to show you how to edit it all inside of Camtasia, but for now, let's jump into probably the most popular one, which is drawing directly on the computer. Now, everybody that I'm talking to has a computer, and I'm guessing you probably have a mouse. And whether it's this kind of mouse or it's this kind of mouse here on your keyboard, you can still use that mouse to draw people's attention. Better yet, you can use a pen and a graphics tablet to draw on your screen. So for example, I have this graphics tablet here. Some of you may have heard of these. They're kind of a uh, brand name well known as Wacom. Uh, this one I got off of Amazon for like 60 bucks. Uh, but it sure, it does allow me to say, uh, to draw on my screen to say A equals six and uh, to say uh, B equals two. And I can draw on that screen. I have to get used to it. It takes a little bit of practice, but you can do it. And it certainly is going to be helpful. Uh, better than nothing. But better than better is best. And that is if your Windows computer actually comes with a pen. Uh, so these tablet PCs, can be really fantastic. So if I did actually want to say, well, uh, C in this equation is the, hypo is the uh, hypotenuse over here, then it's really easy for me to draw directly on the computer. So this one is indirect. This one is direct. Both of them can be recorded using Camtasia. So let's do that now and make a fantastic presentation. In Camtasia, I go to record. And there are some options in the recorder. Uh, the most obvious one for me is that I am going to choose a recording area. And there's a, a small little drop down area there. I'll choose full screen. I don't need my camera on, but I do need my microphone on. And if I have a USB microphone, I would use that. Uh, for now, I'm just going to use the onboard microphone that's part of the Windows computer. And I will hit OK or hit record, excuse me. Now, as this recording is starting, let me just assure you that you're human and that you might make mistakes, and that's okay. Uh, just relax, take a deep breath, and recognize that everything's going to be fine. <laughs> so uh, why don't we begin our recording now? In fact, you might even want to like do a little snap, and uh, because that snap will show up on the timeline uh, when you're starting to record. So here we go. All right, everybody, let's work out this Pythagorean theorem. Uh, we've got uh, A squared, which is going to be one edge of the uh, triangle, B and C, uh, C being the hypotenuse. So if A is uh, 6, then A squared is going to be 36. And if B is 2, then B squared is going to be 4. So uh, C squared is going to be 40, or um, that's for C squared. And uh, so the square root of 40, and I could complete uh, this equation for my students. Now, this is very helpful. If I'm a STEM teacher or professor, fantastic. Couldn't get along without it. architecture, all that kind of stuff. It's great. It's even better if you're a professor that doesn't teach these topics, but you use a lot of PowerPoint. And let me show you why. Uh, we're going to go into PowerPoint. And I've got a presentation that'll go into slideshow mode. And from the beginning, I can move my mouse down into the tray down here. 
and I'll be able to see tools that I didn't see before. If I click on that pen, I can see that I've got a highlighter, I've got a pen, I've even got a laser pointer for our purposes. I'm going to use the pen to uh, go through my presentation. Some slides are pretty simple. There's not a whole lot to highlight, but if I've got some bullet points, my suggestion is use the pen liberally. Help them know where you're at. So if you're talking about um, this, a bullet point you're uh, circling something you're talking about four areas or four intersections you might explain exactly where those four intersections are in this graphic uh, when I go on to the next bullet point I can check mark something I can circle something does this look a little bit busy it does but the key thing is helping the students know exactly where you're at so that they're never confused about wait when she said that this was important what bullet point was she talking about you know the students know where you're at and they're learning everything that you need to know okay when i'm done i hit escape and it will ask me do you want to keep those annotations i usually just say nope thank you very much now when i'm also done with my recording i can hit uh, the camtasia the red camtasia button there and it's going to bring up my recorder I'll hit stop and in a second I'm going to show you how to edit this recording inside of Camtasia. If you have one of the new iPads and the fancy Apple Pencil, you can not only draw the attention of your users, but you can work out equations. You can make your PowerPoint presentations sing and dance. So let's get to it. Uh, one of the applications that you'll need is an application called Capture. Uh, it is a mobile application from TechSmith. We will uh, click on the record button here and we'll make sure the microphone is red, meaning that it's on and we'll go to uh, start the broadcast it's called there we go and that's going to record it's not broadcasting anywhere it's simply making a recording now I'm gonna go up into a drawing application there's lots of them out there I'm gonna use OneNote and uh, with uh, my setup here I might even go and change let's say my paper style uh, to maybe a slightly bigger grid and uh, now let's start recording our Pythagorean theorem equation. All right, everybody, welcome. Uh, if the Pythagorean theorem is to be solved, usually you're solving for the hypotenuse, which is C, uh, but you're going to need to know what A and B are. In this case, let's just say A is 2 and B equals 6. So we're going to say uh, 2 squared plus 6 squared equals oops sorry this is not c but c squared uh, so that's c squared and then i can keep working out that equation which is fantastic right i can draw out and work out as complex of a problem as i would have done on a whiteboard and in fact i even have some space in here that i can i can create more room to work out the equation if i need to one note uh, on the mobile app is on the mobile uh, platform is really quite good but let's say that I've got some slides in PowerPoint and I happen to be a professor of photography. I go to slideshow mode, I go to start, and I can slide back and forth between my slides using my finger. But one of the really cool things is up here in the top is I can uh, use my pen to say, all right, we're talking about uh, this uh, bullet point over here. We're gonna focus the attention on four distinct intersections. That's this one here, this one here, and this one here. And then I can go and explain why it is that the horizon line is along this line here, and why this building is along that line there, and I can explain concepts. More importantly though, if I'm a teacher, I want students to know exactly what I'm talking about. When I pause to say, this is gonna be on the test, or this is really important, I want them to know exactly where I am, and that I can circle that bullet point, or I can check it off because I'm done talking about it, or I can underline, and maybe there's three more bullet points left, but they know exactly where I am in this part of the process. Now, when I'm done, uh, I can go and stop the recording up with that upper right button. I hit stop. And now this is where things get interesting. As I said before, uh, let's pretend that this computer here is just a normal Windows computer, right? And what I need to do is I need to send my files over to that computer. 
So let me log in over here. All right, so now what I have to do is I need to get the recording off of here onto there. And I'm going to go into capture. I can see my recording that I did. And there's an option here to share. So I'm going to go to share. I'm going to go to Camtasia. And it's going to say, hey, can, can you turn on the camera for me? And before I do that, I'm going to go over here onto Camtasia and choose connect mobile device okay it's going to be giving me that QR code this is going to be looking for that QR code let's see if I can show you both of them here and it's going to go fast and there it is it's now right over here ready for me to edit I'll get into editing this file in just a second congrats As much as I love technology, there are sometimes really simple ways uh, to get things done that don't require a fancy pen, but a really simple pen. Uh, we're going to use pencil and paper, and I'm simply going to uh, tell Camtasia that I don't want it to record the screen. I just want to record the webcam, and I'm going to turn the webcam into a glorified document camera. Okay? So, uh, we'll go over to Camtasia. And I'll go to the record button here. By default, Camtasia asks, do you want to record the screen? If so, how much? And uh, th in this case, I'm going to turn off uh, by clicking the green button here. And I'm going to say, I don't need the screen recording on. So screen's off. I do, however, need the screen, the camera on. So that's going to be important to me. And I can see in my preview, hello, 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 uh, and a microphone. I'll use the best microphone I have. If all I've got is my built-in microphone, then I'll use that. Otherwise, uh, I'll use a USB because that's even better. With those two options on, I'm going to hit record. And as I've said in some other uh, situations, just relax, um, be yourself, don't worry about being perfect. All right, the other thing I'm going to do here, uh, and I can edit this out, is I'm going to take this webcam and I'm going to then tilt it downward uh, so that it's taking a look at my document. And now it's time for me to work out the equation. All right, simple math problem here, folks. If uh, A equals 2, then 2 uh, times 2 equals 4. And if B equals 3, then 3 times 3 equals 9. So what we have is 13 equals 4C. Da, 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 da. And of course, I could continue working out this problem. When I'm done, here on the computer, I hit stop. And I can preview this video. Now this video is going to need a little bit of editing and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. All right, in this section about editing, I'm going to show you how to cut the beginning of a video, how to cut out the middle of a video, the end of a video. I'll show you how to grow the cursor how to rotate the video, zoom, and then finally how to share it. So let's start with where to begin the video. I told you at the beginning that it was okay if you just didn't hurry to start your recording. I can tell that I actually got ready and really started about here because listen. Cool. So here we go. All right, everybody, let's. Here is where I clapped or snapped. The snap allows me to say, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, that's, that's where I started. You can see the spike here on the timeline. It's pretty prevalent. Uh, so all I'm going to do is grab the edge of this video here on the left-hand side. I'll drag it over to the left. And if I want to, I can just slide it back. Uh, alternatively, if I want to, I can turn on uh, the magnetic track, and it keeps everything lodged over to the left. Now, if I zoom out a little bit, I can see that as part of my video, I pause for a second. Maybe I was just collecting my thoughts and uh, I can zoom in here if I want to, to see exactly where I needed to make my cut. I'll hit the split here. I can also use the letter S uh, to make the split on the timeline 
and I can use uh, the letter S again, or once again, uh, split. And now I've got this section here, which I'll just hit the delete key. And because my track is magnetic, it just uh, jumps over. And then finally, uh, at the end, uh, I can do a similar thing that I did at the beginning, which is I grab the end and I can trim uh, the video and have it end wherever it is that I want. Obviously, I can listen to it as well. Something else you can do, and this is important if you're using, if you're doing screen drawing in your video, it's possible that it may be hard for your users to see exactly where your mouse is, and you can help them by clicking on that video, going to the properties over here, and uh, growing your cursor to 200, 300%. Uh, that helps quite a bit when you're moving around uh, because now it'll be easier for them to see what you're doing. Additionally, if you want to, uh, you can go even to something called cursor effects and you can put a cursor highlight on your cursor so that it's even easier for them to uh, track your activity. All right, let's jump to the end of this timeline over here. And uh, I'm going to go to my media bin. And you'll recall, or if you watch part of the video, you'll see that at some point I uh, was editing out a paper and pencil recording that I did with my webcam. With this selected, I can go up to the properties window and I can uh, type in 180 degrees and spin that around. I can also go to zoom in on this uh, you'll see that there's this blackness around here because the recording was smaller than the project no problem uh, we'll just scale it up now I can do that because that fills the uh, the screen I can even go further right uh, and if I want to I can also click on the uh, media file sorry I rotated it there by accident there we go something like that and, uh, and I can move it around on the screen as I wish. Now uh, that we've got the video ready to go, all we have to do is share it. My recommendation is uh, share it uh, to MP4 uh, at 1080p, uh, give it a name, and then you can put that file anywhere. Thanks so much for watching this video. I wish you the absolute best in teaching our students online and, uh, and making an impact in their lives. Thanks a bunch.